Hey, and welcome to our live show. It's Jeff from Home Renovation DIY coming at you from Max's basement. It's our makeshift studio. Today we got a really interesting subject matter for you. I know I put out a, a question there a few days ago and asked for a poll. Wanted to know what you guys wanted to learn today. And you know, there was kind of a split decision on that one. So I thought we'd just cover one topic that we haven't really covered yet. And this is the perfect place for us to do that. So here we go. Today we are talking all about how in the heck are we going to get our project done without spending all of our money on materials. So here's the way we're going to do it today. We're going to talk about why projects are expensive. We're going to answer some of the questions I've been getting in, in the video comment section related to this issue. And then I'm also going to probably rant a little bit. And then I'm going to go through a list of places where I shop that are national wholesale chains and I'm going to spill the beans on the whole industry where you can shop, get everything half price, never pay retail again. All right. Whew. So let's dive into this. And Maddie has joined me. Yeah. Wow. Just in the nick of time. Traffic's bad. Uh-huh. Here know. we go. Better to be early than you're never late. Well, All right. Here you go. Yeah. Okay. So first thing is first, I'm going to go back to some of the questions that I've been getting. Relating to... Buying stuff for your renovation. Now, we all know that the renovation market is basically boiled down to two major purchasing decisions for most people. All right, there are two major players. It's Home Depot and Lowe's. <sighs> and, you know, honestly, I hate shopping in both of those stores. <laughs> Not because it's a bad shopping experience, but because I know I'm getting taken advantage of. It's just ridiculous. And it's not the fault of the store, okay? The reality is the cost of doing business today is getting crazy. And so our goal isn't to find a place that we can do business that's getting taken advantage of so we get a better deal. It's to find a place that we can Buy do business. for your renovation. Huh? Now, we all know that. I love going live. <laughs> we, are, we are under the gun here. Now, let's get back to it. When it comes to buying products for your renovation, if you want to save a ton of money, and I know you do, let's look at this way. We have a supply chain. We've got a manufacturer. In most cases, these products are manufactured for renovations in our own countries. Okay, building materials are readily available. Now, you're gonna to have to bear with me today. I'm a little bit sick, and I'm probably gonna be like a deer in the headlights every time there's a distraction. You're doing great. <laughs> So when you get a manufactured product, this guy has a, sells it, I mean, boatloads of this stuff at a time, and they truck it all over to wholesalers, and then wholesalers break it down into little boxes, and they ship it to all of the retailers. And the idea behind Home Depot and Lowe's is that they're supposed to be like the warehouse store, right? Which is complete BS, all right? They, they, they've stripped down the retail model to look like a warehouse, but they are nothing but. At the end of the day, if you want to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and you want to get a better deal, there is a secret that you can do to get a really good price there. People ask me all the time, well, you must get a better price at Home Depot than everybody else. And the answer is yes. But you have to invest your time, okay? If you have good credit and you go to Home Depot, they have a contractor program. So you can sign up for that. You can apply for a commercial credit card and you can get approved. And once you have that status, even as a homeowner, you can do that because you're renovating your whole house. Treat that like a business investment. Get your commercial credit card, okay? Now, what you do is you bring the whole project to the Home Depot guy at the pro desk. Say, this is everything I'm gonna do. Here's all the materials that I'm gonna need. And you break down all your drywall, every faucet, every everything. And you submit that to him and he will price all of that out and give you a discounted rate for everything. At that point, you can then start purchasing things that you need and you don't have to get it all at the same time. And when you just go back to that contractor desk, he marks them off the list, gives you the special rate, you go home. Most contractors I know don't do that. Most contractors I know have bad credit. There's a reason they do that. So, now if you don't have great credit or you don't want to go through the hassle of getting that card, there's another rewards program out there. It's just about a three to 5% reward program but you put in a little pin number every time you shop and they track your purchases and they send you, you know, Home Depot gift cards in your e inbox and you can take that to the store and they'll scan it and they'll give you a little discount every time you shop. That's kind of handy too. But 
that's not a real big issue. It's kind of like, I look at Home Depot like an oversized convenience store, you know? Like, where you just want to walk down the street, and grab your bread and eggs and milk and go home. That's what I use it for, okay? It's not where I start my shopping experience. It's not where I go to design projects. It's not even a place that I go to source out materials. The only thing I go there for is plumbing and electrical fittings, drywall and lumber, and hey, outside of that, not a heck of a lot. All right, so here's the list. Actually, Matt, mm. can you pull up a regular web page? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're going to do a little exercise here together because when I talk about where to go and how to find these places, people get confused. And so I thought if we did this together, Max, do we have this in the, in the screen? Yeah? Good. We're going to do a little web search together and I'm going to show you the power of Google. All right. So just pull up a Google page. Thank you, because I hate using Yahoo. I don't know how they sneak that in there every once in a while. Every time I download another software, whoop, there goes the yeah. defaults. Okay, so now, because I'm not feeling well today, my brain's not working, I wrote it down. <laughs> Ready? So here's the cheat. I want you to type in building, space materials, space supply, space wholesale. All right, and I'll crop up a map, go down here, save more places, Good. populate that whole list. Okay? Now what you're gonna see here is the city of Ottawa, and this region here represents about 1.3 million people, and all of these stores, it's funny, they're all in the east end by the highway, because mm -hmm. it's right on the major trucking routes. All of these stores that are on this list, if you look at Convoy Supply, for instance, um, that is a company that's international. They're all over U.S. and Canada. And they have roofing materials and exterior siding and facade, James Hardy cement board. They got all kinds of stuff there. Generally, they are experts in finishing the outside of your building. Move down here, Orleans Carpet. Yeah, it's a carpet store, but you know what? You can get contractor pricing with them too. You just got to ask for it and open up a cash account. More and more and more, the wholesalers that you're going to find on this list are looking for ways to do business direct with the consumer. Because the e-commerce market, which is about 12% of all of the purchases now, is starting to create competition and tighten up a little of the profit margins. So wholesalers are starting to open up their doors and be friendly to consumers walking out the street who know exactly what they want. So here we go. Scroll through this list a little bit and I'll show you some of the guys that I like to go through. All right. Bum, bum, bum. And keep going. And there's a bunch of roof mart. Rubber Beery, so Rubber Beery, come Whoa. down a little bit. Okay. In the other direction, when I sit down, I'm, I'm backwards. Here we go. This company here, um, they're like a carpenter place, okay? So if you love doing woodwork and carpentry, you don't go to Home Depot to buy all your sheet goods, you go here. Because I'm gonna guarantee you, you're gonna get a higher quality and it's gonna be a lower price. All right, let's keep going down. What else we got, Marin Brothers, I go there for my drywall and drywall materials and supplies. All the tips and tricks you see me using in the videos and all the special little materials and tools, you buy at one of these stores, because Home Depot and Lowe's are never gonna carry it. Let's see here, Nobles for Plumbing, Emco's for Plumbing, the P&B, there's tons of them. Here, Wolseley Waterworks, okay? Now that's in Canada. Their parent store is in the States, and they call it Brainwork, Brainwork, Ferguson's, okay? Ugh, <laughs> man, I'm telling you, I'm really sweating it out here. I should be in bed with a thermostat in a crevice somewhere, you know? But here I am. I promised I'd be here, so here I am. All right. So Wolseley is the place where you can buy all of your plumbing fixtures, plumbing materials, and they also supply the gas side of things. So you can also go there and get a heck of a deal on electric fireplaces. And you don't need a, a, a ticket. You don't need a gas license to buy an electric fixture. So, for instance, I've had a couple of customers who've wanted to get a little fire feature, and we can get them an electric fire feature, not a problem. You know, instead of spending three or four thousand dollars on it, we can get these things half price. Just so you know, there's no sense going to buy retail. Go to Wolseley, open up a cash account, boom, you're in business. All right. Some of these places require you to have a business card. Woo, very scary, but it's a cash account. There's no credit required. You fill out a form, they enter your information in the computer, which is name, address, and that's about it. And then you can purchase cash, visa, debit right there in the store. All you need to know is what you want. And we're going to be able to help you with that. So keep on going down here. Let's see what else we got. 
Next page. Yeah, there's like pages and pages and pages of this. Hmm. There's no shortage of this. Okay. He's got suppliers in the states too. Uh, well, so yeah, but it's under Ferguson is the name. Oh, okay. So keep going down. And there's ProSol, and that's a nice place. Keep going. And I've got my, um, you're going to find countertop places, okay? You're going to find Dragona Flooring. Now, these guys specialize in supplying all the materials you need for doing um, tile installation, carpet installation, transitions from all the different floorings and all the different heights. They've got carpet. They've got baseboard trim. Wow. When you go into Dragona and you're looking for baseboard, don't be surprised if you end up paying less than half the cost of Home Depot. It's just the way it is, folks. They have a 400% markup on their trim when it comes off the truck. Unbelievable. But that's the cost of doing business because they have to wheel it through the place and they have to load all their trim into those silly little slots. Yep. Places like this, they have a trim slot and they carry four feet of the same trim, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of linear feet. They get it shipped once a month. Home Depot has to stock every day. That's not wholesale, that's retail. All right. So we've got a boom. Yeah, boom plumbing, supply, heating. You can get electrical places, you can get light fixtures, you can get all your electrical and plumbing, all of your HVAC. Now HVAC, in most cases, you need a gas license. That's the only downside, that's where I live. Depending on your jurisdiction, you may or may not be able to take advantage of this, but another place that you can go is a glass store. All right, you can get custom made tempered glass. Now in Ottawa, if you were to put in here tempered glass, uh, an addition or just new? Yeah, new, new search. If we were to search for tempered glass in Ottawa, let's just for fun, we're going to populate a list here. We're going to have a bunch of different suppliers. They're going to be scattered all around the city. And one thing that they all have in common, none of them make tempered glass in Ottawa. Oh, big surprise. Okay. They're retailers. They're not wholesalers. These guys don't even make their own glass. So I'll tell you a story. I'm doing a project and I needed a sheet of glass for a bathroom. You might remember this one. It had, um, it was really big, had a walk in, the, the linear drain right in the middle, right? And then the lady came in on camera. She was all excited about her room. Uh, in that project, we needed one sheet of glass. It had to be tempered glass for safety. And I called the local glass companies around here and they all gave me a price around the same amount of money, around 1800 bucks to put in this piece of glass. I was like, wow, that's crazy. So then I started doing some research into Toronto. This is years ago. I found a tempered glass manufacturer that has a showroom that's open to the public and they give out the same price that they give to contractors. Unreal. I made a deal over the phone for this piece of glass because they supply all these stores. The truck comes up every week. <laughs> so all I did was buy it online with a Visa card, gave them the dimensions, and I sat in a parking lot of one of these glass guys when they came up and dropped off the, sh the shipment. And then he turns around and says, you're the guy with the glass? I'm like, yep. And he put it in the back of my truck with me. And I drove away with a seven by four foot piece of glass. It cost me $280, not $1,800. So, uh, no. I know. It's a little thing, but it's a big thing. Now, if you understand how to measure and how to order all these products, you are going to be light years ahead of buying retail. So part of the goal of our channel here is to move the bar from where your understanding is and what your limitations are and get you to a place where you can start taking advantage of all this stuff. So when you go into a wholesaler, you can't say, here's my project, what should I do? Okay, they're not gonna welcome that. What they're gonna want is someone walking in and saying, uh, I need four bags of Mapai Carabon tea, mm -hmm. right, 10 pounds of unsanded grout, three pieces of this, two bags of that, this tube of caulking, and two metal trims, this millimeter thickness, boom. They have guys run around the store, collect it, throw it in your car for you, and you're gone. And you will get the deal of a lifetime. For example, you go to Home Depot, you want to buy thin set cement, you're going to do a tile job. Lots of people do their own tile jobs nowadays. It's not scary, and it can be done rel relatively easy if you have a good little tile leveling clip system. You go to Home Depot, and where I live, it's about 30, 35 bucks for a bag of cement. And you're like, okay, I need a bag of cement. I'm gonna do a little bathroom floor. Big deal, right? 35 bucks, eh, nothing to it. Oh, and 30 bucks for the grout. Mm. Now you're up to 65, right? Oh, and I need plywood. Oh, and I need a trim. Oh, and I need spacers. <laughs> Before you know it, you're up to a couple hundred dollars in materials just to put the tile in. 
Now, if you went to one of these supply stores, you're going to get your cement for about 14 bucks, not 35. And everything else is going to be half price. Blows my mind. I see contractors every day coming out of Home Depot with a cart full of bags of cement. The supplier is three blocks away. All they have to do is go three blocks away and instead of buying 20 bags of cement from Home Depot, they could have bought it from those guys and saved themselves three, four hundred dollars. I don't know why the world doesn't do this yet. You know, there's a place for being convenient and there's a place for being smart. And I'm a big fan of getting your ass out of bed in the morning and getting down to these stores that are open at 6 30, 7 o'clock at the latest, and they can take care of filling your car. They're all within a couple of blocks of each other. You do a little trip, you load up your vehicle with everything you need, you go home, you got a couple extra hundred bucks in your pocket because you didn't throw your money away. Good deal. All right? Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Lovely. Let's close this up. Let's get on the chat. I would love to hear from what the people out there have got to say about the situation. <laughs> They're 100% agreeing with you. Bang for your buck. Yeah. Don't, I mean, uh, don't you love a good bargain? Okay, so. <sighs> I'm going to have a little bit of a rant here now because I was doing a little research. Was it today or yesterday? It's just about the inflation of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. But yeah it's insane. So, and I'm going to just do a little bit of a history lesson. I'm going to get through this as quick as I can. All right? 1970. United States and Canada, we had about the same kind of economies going on, right? Newcomers to our countries, they would come into the country, they'd have a job for like about $10,000 a year on average. You could buy a car for three and a house for 30. Blows your mind, right? It seems cheap. Now the wages were low, the taxes were low, but it was affordable. And if you wanted to buy a used car, you could save up your salary from a couple of weeks, bam, buy it cash, you're good to go. How many people buy a used car with a couple of weeks salary nowadays? Isn't going to happen. 1985 comes along 25 years later and all of the market is inflated about 400%. Cars are up, salaries are up, homes are up, taxes were also up, it was all nuts. Right? Same kind of distribution. Now here we are 25 years later, Canada, US looked about exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Now we look at the situation. The American market for labor, your average salary is $10,000 a year higher than it is in Canada. All right? Your cars cost about the same. Your houses, the average house is $200,000. In Canada, it's $480,000. $480,000. Where'd that go off the rails? Like, unbelievable. Like, what the heck? And our, our income tax is almost at par with you guys. And the other beautiful thing, you know how you have a state tax down in the United States somewhere between zero and seven and a half percent, depending on which state you're in. Dude, where I live, I'm stuck with like 13% tax. Like I go and buy a house plus 13%, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. So in Canada, if you want to get ahead of the market, the only thing you can do is buy a house and fix it up because there's incredible value to be had. So I'm doing a little research on the American market and I found incredible value down there too. It seems like if you really, really had to, you could move into a lot of neighborhoods in Florida and buy, buy a double wide trailer for 30,000 bucks, pay $500 a month to be there, and you could fix that thing up with a good little facelift using these tricks. You'd be living large in about one or six months to be able to do that. Mm. I think that's something we might do on this channel. Well, here's just a, crazy, a hint. Here's a crazy question. Talk yeah. about buying houses and stuff. Is it sure. better to buy a burned house or build one from scratch? <laughs> if house, yeah, if it's caught in a fire. A burn house. Mm -hmm. <sighs> that all depends. Like, there's so many factors there. What's your comfort level? How, how good are you with your hands? Do you have somewhere to live in the meantime? Because it's not the kind of house you want to live in when you're working on it because you want to complete all of the phases of construction for the whole house together. Like you want to fix your structure once, not room at a time. Um, that's the tricky one. Uh, yeah, burns are tough. I mean, just really know what you're saying about the cost of housing getting higher and higher. Is it better to buy a burnt house or should you just buy it, like just build your own? Building your own house requires a lot more equity. If you can afford it, it's always a better deal. End of discussion. Okay, if you have the capital to, to facilitate building your own home, then do it. Um, and then do as many of the sub trades as you can in the midst of it, right? For sure. And like, let's go from there to this. How about this? Message for the millennials, 25 to 35 years old, okay? Uh, I know that it's kind of tricky. 
I'm in the generation that came after the baby boom. So you don't blame me for all the problems that you're facing. It's really all their fault. And I don't mind saying that. For a long time, there was such a huge group of people that every time there was an election, everybody catered and pandered to them to make sure that they could get reelected. And so they'd just been, they're like a kid in a, a kid at a grocery store sitting in the front of the cart. And every time they go to the checkout, they whine and parents throw them candy to shut them up. That's the political system in North America for the last 40 years. It's been a mess. It's made it almost impossible for my generation to buy a house without working around the clock. And I know your generation, you guys have got issues getting good, sustainable work. You're all overeducated. You're all in debt. It's a mess. The only thing that's going to happen here that's going to be any saving grace for you is if you can hold on a few more years until they're all dead, then there'll be lots of jobs available. Like, until the baby boom either dies or decides to retire, there's not a whole lot of hope for you. So, you're kind of stuck. But there's one thing you can do. You can take the money you have now and you can adjust your living situation. Take advantage of these um, being a digital nomad, working from home, and go find yourself a cheap place to live and fix it up, right? Throw some equity into it. The sooner you buy a house, the better. For whatever reason, your generation is, is, is almost on paper, it seems almost allergic to buying a place because you like to be free, you need options, you need to be mobile. I get all that. But at the same time, if you don't put down some roots, you're losing all of your money. And if you wait till you're 35 or 40 to buy a house, you're going to have one heck of a time. It's just going to be really interesting. Anyway, I think a better plan, this is dad talking now, right? I think a better plan for your generation is to live in a double wide right? With a used car. And in five years, then you can have a palace. Instead of trying to act like you got everything together when you're hurting inside. Mm. Yeah. Anyway. So what are a, good, a couple of good keywords you can throw into Google? <laughs> I would scream at you, move out of my house, but you already did. Yeah. <laughs> so what would you Google it? What are some good keywords to Google for some good supply places? Okay. So didn't we just do that? We did a little bit. There's a okay. question that was just popped up. All right. So the answer to the question, what do you Google? I, my, I got my sticky note on my wallet. Hello. Nice. Um, building materials, supply wholesale. You do that anywhere you live and you put the cookies on so they know where you live and it'll populate a map in and around your area and you'll be able to have lots of options. And you can go on their website, find out what companies they represent. Um, different plumbing suppliers will have different deals with different manufacturers. So if you're stuck on getting something from Delta, you might go with one supplier, they won't have it. So don't spend your day driving around all these places. Look on their website, see who they, they cover. And these companies are huge. So if they say we represent Delta, they don't mean one faucet. They mean everything Delta makes. They can order it all, okay? And they'll order it up and they get daily deliveries from their distribution centers that are located in key geographies. So like for instance, in Ottawa, Matt, mm -hmm. I go to the store, they don't have it in stock. They go on the computer and they check the DC, the distribution center, and it's in Toronto. And they'll be like, yep, we got it in Toronto. I'll be here tomorrow morning for you. I'm like, how do you do that? Because as soon as they hit the button, the computer does the job. They got overnight pickers. It's on a truck. That guy leaves that truck from Toronto at six o'clock in the morning. He's already heading here. All right. So by noon, my product's sitting in the store and it's all computerized and tagged and sitting on a shelf. And I walk in the door and I'm like, I'm here to get my stuff. Boop. They walk the back, grab it and bring it out. Mm -hmm. it, that service is amazing. It's faster than Amazon and it's cheaper. I know it's nuts. Anyway. I got a list here of places I like to shop for materials. Now, don't worry, I'm going to go through it pretty quick. If you want to write it down, then you can do that. You might have to back up a couple times to catch all this. So I like to go to Gentech uh, in the States. I think it's called AMI. There's a couple of times you'll see that happen. I go to Merkley in Ottawa. It's a stone supplier. Awesome place. Looks like a little bit of a disaster from the outside. But that's the point, right? I mean, they're not trying to impress anybody. They're there for contractors. So, <laughs> hey, don't expect the red carpet when you go to some of these places, you know? Uh, they don't have any barking dogs, which is good, but park in the parking lot, look for something that looks like a showroom, and usually you'll be okay. Some of these places you go to is just like a tin barn and a door on the side. And you're like, where do I go? If there's a door, walk in it and say hello, and you'll figure it out. Um, for countertops, I got my new best friends over at Cephalone Countertops. They do granite quartz and, of course, Formica. While I'm on that, let's all stop giving Formica such a hard time. They got new products. They don't even look like Formica anymore. And they're so cheap, it's ridiculous. Okay? If you have a budget, we're going to do Formica tops. 
I'm doing some in my new kitchen that we're doing. We're gonna do courts on the island because that's where the fun is, but everything else behind me is all gonna be for my cook. Uh, I love going shopping at Euro Tile. Now, there are a lot of tile stores in the world. Most of them operate independent. You might find some chains in, this, in the states where you are. But if you walk in and you just ask for a, set up a contractor cash account, most of these stores will just set you up right out of the gate with 25, 30, 35% off. It's not even a question, all right? Why in the world would you pay full retail at a tile store if it takes you five minutes to fill out an application? Like, no brainer. Unbelievable. And you know, some of these guys are not gonna be too happy with me for letting the cat out of the bag, but meow. So here we go. Uh, Moran Brothers, all right, for drywall. Here's the deal. They're actually, their drywall is more expensive than Home Depot. Oddly enough, they're a drywall company. But they, they, they're against the rule. What they do is they do this. They, they basically say, show me volume first and then we'll talk price. Okay, so some wholesalers will do that. They were like, well, let me see a history of purchasing before I give you a deal. Mm. Paint stores don't do that. They give you a deal. Countertop stores, they'll give you a deal. Uh, tile stores, they'll just give you a deal. Plumbing stores, they'll just give you the deal. They don't care. Now, uh, go down the list. Woolsey Mechanical, like I said, Ferguson's in the States. I like Dulux. The other option is very similar to them is Sherwin-Williams, and they are all across the coast to coast in the United States. They also have some great products. I'm not as familiar, so I don't know the brands, but that may change in the future. Just to be a little more simple for the audience, if I'm using paint that people can actually get their hands on. I know I've been listening, I'm gonna learn. Uh, we have a place called Marchand Electric, okay? Basically, it's, it's a little window where three guys stand there and they take your order, they go in the warehouse and bring your stuff out. But they also have a showroom with discontinued lighting and all kinds of deals there. So don't be afraid to pop into some of these traditional contractor stores when you're doing your shopping, because they will sell anything. The number one rule in business, they're trying to make money. And if you walk in there looking to spend it, they're gonna help you spend it, right? Mm -hmm. So, might as well get a deal. Um, I like going to Dragona, that's my flooring supply store. Uh, Caught Lumber, if you're doing anything structural, dude, they got it in stock, I don't care what you need, right? Uh, Perkins Lumber is where I go for my cedar, and here's why. Cedar decks, right? Okay, so the guys at Perkins Lumber in Ottawa, and you need to make some phone calls because all kinds of wood has grading. It's not all good. The stuff in the box stores is most likely not the best stuff in the planet because of a lot of reasons, but one of them is relationships. Mm -hmm. The guys at Perkins have been dealing with the same mills making cedar for over 40 years. They're all best friends, all right? And when Perkins calls up and says, hey, I need another truckload of cedar, they say, no problem, it's on the way. Then they get on the phone, they call Home Depot and say, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to wait my buddy down in this little country <laughs> store just outside of Ottawa asked for more cedar and I'm filling his order first. That happens. So don't be afraid to shop around and find the best price for the best quality with the best service. I'm just saying. And then we have this great store in Ottawa. It's called Wood Source. And from the outside, it looks like a specialty wood store. It looks like somewhere where you're going to have to sell one of your children before to shop there. But the truth is they're a mill. Talk about supply chain. We're going right back to where the guys that cut it. They are a mill and they have all kinds of stuff there, incredible long legs. You can get cedar boards there for your deck 20 feet long. Who knew, right? You don't have to have any cuts. Anyway, places like that, the specialty stores, don't be afraid to go in and shop. We recently did that bathroom vanity. I got my vanity countertop there, 160 bucks. Wasn't on sale, it didn't have to haggle. Just went into the mill and they had a wall full of great deals on slabs. Who knew? Anyway, now here's the downside. All right, here's the catch, because everybody's like, well, what's the catch? You're going to show me how to, and I'm talking big money, okay? One second, I'm not done yet. I just finished siding and changing all the windows on three sides of my six-sided house. It's a big place, okay? The retail price for purchasing siding and windows on that house, I'm just doing the math in my head real quick. Um... 7,500 bucks. Sounds like a fair deal. $15,000, you can get a brand new facade around the whole building, all new doors and windows. 15,000 bucks. That's pretty economical. You could do worse. But I know where to shop. But on top of that, because I had a cash account set up, instead of 7,500 for those three sides, I paid, hmm, three. Mm. 
3,200 bucks after tax. That's amazing. I actually got my windows with a really sweet deal. Really sweet deal. <laughs> and the best thing about windows is ever since I'm gonna say like about 1980 when they invented vinyl casing windows, there's been a lot of advancements. There's a lot of bells and whistles. But if you were to put a window on the scale of one to 100 as far as quality, in the 1930s, windows were like a 50 out of 100, okay? They were single pane and they had wood sash, but at least they had a track system, so it killed a lot of the draft, right? And then you move forward in time, window, 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 wood, wood, wood. It didn't get any better. They got to wood with double pane. That got a little better. That's like a 60, 70% quality. And then they came out with the vinyl. The day they did that, they brought the quality level up to 90 out of 100. The cheapest vinyl in the world from 1980 is just as good as the cheapest vinyl in the world today. The most expensive window I've ever priced out so far was a, uh, this is new, found, new, new glass technology. The point is, if you wanna buy a really expensive window, you can spend $3,000 a window, no problem. Is it gonna do anything different than a $300 window? Yeah. But the difference is so small. You're going from like 90 to 91, 92% quality. It's just not really feasible. So if you're gonna put new windows in, save your money, just put new windows in, okay? Go with a nice double pane, vinyl window, especially if you live in Florida, and you got a single pane window, dear Lord. I mean, it'll save you a fortune in energy bills. Let's move on to this now, this, the catch. It's always a catch, right? Whenever you're buying wholesale, don't think for a second you're gonna go back and give them something you don't use and get your money back. <laughs> That's not happening, all right? Which is actually one of the best things about them. Because when you go to Home Depot and you buy stuff, like glues, silicones, construction adhesives, mm. sometimes they've been purchased and then returned. And in a lot of cases, they're returned because somebody left them in the car overnight in the wintertime and it froze. Now the chemical composition has changed, the product doesn't work. But these Home Depots and Lowe's, they take this stuff back I don't know why. I actually did a project once where I used a silicone that had been frozen. I was so green at the time, I didn't know the difference. So I did this whole shower surround in the silicone, came back the next day and it was still wet. You could wipe it out. I was just like, I'm done. I got to take this whole thing apart, clean it all off. Oh, unbelievable. Yeah, that was a happy client. <laughs> Save yourself the aggravation. Go to a wholesaler. They don't let you return caulking so you can get your $3 back. Oh, did I say that out loud? Yeah, silicone caulking, $3 a tube, not seven or eight. And it's good. It's really good stuff. Some of these places let you do returns, like Wolseley, they'll let you do a return, but they're gonna charge you 25% restocking fee because of the distribution model, okay? So you've gotta to pay to get that stuff put back on a shelf. That's all there is to it. And I don't even know if it's actually cost that much, but the point is they don't wanna deal with it because it's a paperwork nightmare for the guys at the front desk. So that's the downside. You can't do returns. And if you don't know what you want, they're not gonna help you. But the good side is if you open up a cash account, they will give you copies of the product catalogs from all these stores, and you can expose yourself to every option available when you're making your purchase decisions. So you're not gonna look into the store and go, here's three faucets in black that I can choose from. Two of them are pullouts. One of them is a, a touch. Hmm, what do I pick? No, you're gonna go through the book. They're gonna have 20 or 30 different design lines, all the different finishes that are available. You're gonna have thousands of choices and you can get exactly what you want at the price that you want. And the price in the book is suggested retail. So when you go in to buy it, you're gonna get your huge discount off that price. So don't be freaked out if it says a thousand bucks for a shower system, because it really means five or 600. Mm. Not a bad deal. Anyway, let's open up the floor to some questions. Wow. Yeah, I'm glad I got that off my chest. You've got a really cool audience here, Dad. I'm just saying. Well, you know. There's people answering questions so you don't have to. Others that's are, really nice, guys. Others, appreciate it. My brain ain't what it should be today anyway. I was just saying, you should start a podcast. One guy asked as if uh, this one lady is single. You know, they're, uh -huh. they're all like talking amongst themselves. Or all right. Well, listen, really cool. the floor is open. What time is it, Matt? It's uh, 20 to 7. 20 to 7. Well, guys, we got 20 minutes before we're going to bust into our members-only podcast. Or and It's not a podcast. What is it called? It's... I don't know. My brain's not working. Extreme. We got 20 minutes. If you can, you can pick my brain. I can't guarantee what's going to come out today, but we'll uh, we'll do our best to help you guys out. Got questions? Um, 
Just a quick little mention, if you are part of our membership program, that live show starts at just a little bit after seven. So we're gonna close this one off and then start up again for members. And we're gonna do a whole members Q&A and we're gonna see if we can help some people out. We're gonna throw some pictures up on the screen, mm. all that kind of good stuff. So if you have not become a member yet, over the next 15 minutes, take some time, hit the join button, or go down the link in the description of whatever, I don't know if live feed does that. I'm, pretty I'm pretty completely good. scrambled today. That's okay. That's all right. Anyways, rapid fire questions. Join and be a member and I can help you with your reno. That is the point. We don't wanna leave you abandoned. And if you got other questions about this kind of program, you're gonna be able to ask those questions and I guarantee to answer them on our community section and in our comments section on the video. So feel free to do that. Let's get to it. The copper pipe in my garage keeps bursting in the winter even though I let the water flush out. Can PEX be used instead? Yes. Wow, even though you get rid of the water, eh? You must have some standing water in there. <laughs> but here's the deal. The PEX will actually grow to almost 200% of its own size without bursting. And then when the water thaws, it'll shrink back and be right back into business again. It is the miracle product, okay? So if you have those kinds of freezing issues, save your life. And you know what? Whatever system you use to crimp that joint, the joint is stronger than the PEX. So the PEX will expand and the joints will not be compromised. Shark bite, um, pinch rings, clamp rings, whatever you use, you're gonna be good to go. Uh, what is the cash, so my man Dan just joined up, he said, what is the cash account at a building wholesaler? Okay, Real so quick. you got two choices. You can do credit account or cash account. Credit account is awesome because if you're running a company, you can set up a credit account and pay later, which means you can supply all the materials to the job and wait till you get paid before you pay for the materials. It's a little bit of buffer. It's also great for organization. It also gives you the ability to put people's names on the account so that you can have other people purchasing on your credit card and you don't have to ever give it to them. The cash account is simply means we're not doing any credit check I don't care who you are, we're gonna give you a deal, we just need to have your information in the system, and when you don't get nothing out of here without paying for it first. We got lots of questions here. Keep them coming. Most effective and longest lasting shower waterproofing system. Most effective and lastest long, well, the longest, longest lasting. The lastest longing. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> That'd be a great movie. Oh, I am having one of those days. That's okay. Okay, um, the, the best shower waterproofing system. Curdy. <sighs> Man, you know, I'm gonna have to say Curdy. For the price point, you just can't beat it. If it's installed right, you just don't think you, can, you can't beat Schluter. I know Weedy is a product, it's great, it's got options, but it's so freaking expensive. And you gotta trust a caulking joint, I'm just not into that. Uh, best practices for a glass block half wall. Glue and... <laughs> I'm not a favor, I can't answer best practices for that. Okay, what are your opinions on epoxy countertops like stone coat? They look great if you're good at it. <laughs> okay. But how many countertops do you want to do before you get it right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know any wholesale window places? One, in the one second. Epoxy countertops is all art, okay? You know how I get people saying, oh, you make drywall mud look easy? <laughs> Those guys make epoxy look easy, all right? To the nth degree. I'm going to say, if you think you're just going to go to the store, buy epoxy, sprinkle it on there like foo-foo dust and walk away and make it look like granite, you're dreaming. All right, next. Have you ever heard of the Cardinal Showroom? Cargill? Cardinal. Cardinal Showroom? Mm -hmm. No, I have not heard of Cardinal. Okay. But it's quite possible that where you live, you have different showrooms doing different products. There's going to be hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chains of these stores. Yeah. Uh, do you know any wholesale windows uh, companies in the States that you would recommend? Yeah, the same one as Gentech in the States, and I believe it's AMI. AMI. So check that out. Okay. Uh, can you do a show on tiling your kitchen countertop? Well, yeah, I guess I could if I was going to tile a kitchen countertop. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of like doing a wall, only it's flat. The only real trick there is you want to buy the special um, edge pieces, right? So you've got to go to a store that supplies the right kind of tile. Which is better, acrylic or fiberglass shower bases? Um, oh, that's a tough one. I think they both work great. It's not about the finish, it's about the structure underneath. So make sure that you've got a really solid structure so it's not moving and creaking when you, when you lay it on a concrete floor. You want it to be as solid as a rock, even without putting it in a sand bed. That would be my best suggestion. Uh, a 
about Apex. Uh, I'm just trying to find questions here. Everyone's talking so fast. Yeah, sure. Why not? Sandy says, hi, Matt. What's up, Sandy? Hi, Sandy. Uh, <laughs> where's the best place to purchase lighting on a budget? I'm specifically looking for bathroom vanity lights. Bathroom vanity lights on a budget? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you can get a two light vanity bar for 30 bucks. If you want a better deal than that, then um, go to the Reese store or Habitat for Humanity. You probably get something for five or 10. Uh, how do you repair a basement crack in the foundation? Well, that all depends on the size of your crack. <laughs> well, uh, not valuable, in most so. cases, a crack is just a, uh, a small structural issue and it can be filled with an epoxy injection. Uh, don't get taken though, because in, in Canada where labor is super expensive, there are companies are giving a lifetime guarantee for 600 bucks for an epoxy injection from floor to ceiling. So use that as a benchmark when people are pricing for you. Uh, would you use cement board and regard, ooh, and red regard, in regard and top blue skin exterior wall before installing the lead stone you did at Max's house? Okay, cement so board. around a fireplace? Right. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say there's any need to waterproof the cement board if you're doing a design feature with stone, only if it's in a wet area. So just cement board and you can cement your stone right to that. Best plank laminate floor. Best plank laminate floor? Mm -hmm. In laminate? Yep. Ugh. <sighs> That's tough. Um, five bucks a square foot. That's my answer. If you're not spending good money on laminate, you're not getting good laminate. Okay. Everything else is just temporary. Uh, would you use an air gap product throughout an unfinished basement or just in a living portion? How do you seal the tap cons? Thanks, love your videos and tips. An air gap product. Okay, so you're talking about my subfloor system. All right, let's get through this because I've had 8,000 questions on that. If you put your dimpled membrane on the ground and your plywood on top and you screw it with a tap con into the concrete, Yes, the weak spot in that installation is where the screw is. Now, there are five spaces or six spaces per sheet of plywood where there's a weak spot. The weak spot is going to take probably 30 to 40 years before it becomes an issue, okay? And the only issues that's gonna happen is you might get a little bit of rot around the screw head on that plywood. And that is not gonna create an atmospheric issue or a performance issue. So what I call it, it's a negative negative zero issue. It's like having a dirty car. No big deal. You can wash it when you're in the bloody mood. Mm -hmm. This is not a structural issue, so don't worry about it. Best thoughts on an old house. This is exactly ours. Uh, my house has logs for joists. Yep. Uh, best way to get them replaced. Structural engineers have not responded after looking for two months. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really good reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> when you start messing around with changing out your trees, um, you always run the risk of it not going very well. Um, having a relationship with a structural engineer is a really good thing to have. So what I would say is uh, call your structural engineer and book an on-site assessment, okay? And don't tell him you've got trees in your house. Wait till he gets there and that'll make him responsible to answer your questions and give you an actual plan to move forward. It's not as tricky as you think. So yeah. That's a, yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah, that's smart. Uh, Keep okay. your cards close to your chest on that one. Yeah. yeah, this is a good question. Would you recommend holding off on a tile job because of uh, changing trends? Because of changing trends. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's my rule for tile. If you're putting anything in that is natural stone or looks like natural stone, go right ahead. Natural stone will never go out of style. So if you're using a ceramic or porcelain that looks like a marble or a granite or any other natural or, or, you know, Whatever. If it looks like a natural stone, you're going to look like a natural stone. That stuff hasn't changed for millions of years and it's not going to change any time in your lifetime. It'll always be in style. They will never stop cutting natural stone out of the mountains. So, fair game. Uh, in the same way, you know, remember the little one by one inch blue glass tiles? Yeah, that trend lasted just long enough for everybody to buy blue glass and then start puking in their shoes every time they saw it. Hmm. Unbelievable. Don't fall for that junk, all right? Every uh, time there's a trend that comes up with a color, walk away. Natural stone, good to go. Uh, 1982 house, they're doing both bathrooms. Yep. They have steel and cast iron tubs. Is there yep. any reason to replace them? Only if they're corroded to the point where the drain assembly can't be put on properly. But you can have them painted. You can have them painted in place, or if it's a clawfoot, you can have it taken off site. But if it's an 80s, paint it in place. 
change your wall, change your tile, finish everything. Don't do the silicone work. Call the um, refinishing glazing guy to come in and he'll bring in his equipment. He'll glaze it in about a half an hour or so, but it's, it's industrial equipment, all right? So he's got special breathing apparatus and everything. He'll do the glazing, let it set overnight. If you do the caulking the next morning, that tub is good to go for another 10 or 15 years. If you find the finish wearing off a little bit because of use, you can always have them back. It's two or 300 bucks, depending where you live. I'm a big fan of that because those suckers are heavy. And if I can spend 200 bucks and avoid dragging one of them through the house, I'm all down with that. Uh, carpet over concrete, is that good or bad? It's fine, as long as you've got the right underlay. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Pink Shield Fireproof? You ever hear that? Never heard of it. No? Okay. No. But uh, anything that's fireproof, if you need fireproofing, then I would say that that'd be a nice thing to have. Fireproofing is good. Uh, is luxury vinyl worth the savings for install versus hardwood and tile? Is luxury vinyl worth the install? Yeah, here's the deal. Um, let's just get talk real tricky on floors. Anything that you install that's floating is secondary to something that's installed that's fixed, okay? Something that's attached to your house is a structural element, like hardwood or um, even an engineered wood or a ceramic tile or a porcelain. Those elements are fixed and they will always give you a better return on investment if they're done right, okay? Now, if you're not comfortable going into those kind of degrees of project, then a luxury vinyl is definitely 100% a good way to go. That's a product that'll always outperform your expectations and you can get a good luxury vinyl product for less than three bucks a square foot, so why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. How would you finish a basement uh, that was previously finished and there's a section that doesn't uh, meet the floor joists? I guess it's an older home. So there's a finished section that does not go all the way to the ceiling floor joist. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Oh. Um, frame it and finish it? Yeah, restructure it. Yeah. yeah, like just start from the beginning and, and, and tie in your frame and get a good thermal break and then make sure your vapor barrier is continuous. You most likely have to remove whatever drywall is on the other half of that wall so that you can go back to the beginning and finish that all as one system. Uh, two part question here. How do you remove uh, mold from a bathroom and how can you fix some water damage on a bathroom ceiling? Where okay. The, where the fan is. So in most cases, mold in the bathroom is in the framing or on the subfloor. We did a video where we showed the subfloor restoration technique because it had been wet and gotten moldy, but it was still, when it dried out, it was very, very strong. So we just sprayed the kills on it. The reality is, is when you have mold restoration companies come in your house, they don't do a lot more than just clean everything up, put a little mold X on there, and they, they wash it down, and then they just paint everything with kills. It's a oil-based sealer that keeps the mold from traveling through the wood, again, if it comes in contact with moisture. That's all. It's really designed to make it look pretty because after they do the spray bottle treatment, it's pretty much done. Mm. The painting is just an after effect. This guy's got uh, water that, uh, half the, you know, he sees water on his hardwood floor inside the home uh, after it rains for a few days. Yeah, that can be possible depending where you live. Right. Yeah. Um, I had a client who uh, had similar effect, but what it was is they had a roof vent and in the winter time they had snow buildup and so it actually started melting inside the vent and it traveled along a little wall and then down a wall around a window and ended up hitting the hardwood floor because water just keeps moving until it finds somewhere to get soaked up and that's what happened to him so you might have a uh, penetration in your roof system because if it rains and you get water in your house if there's something wrong with your water deflection system remember homes are not waterproof on the outside they're just designed to move water away so there's something wrong with that I would check all your valleys and all those little areas like that. Make sure all your caulking joints on your roof, because there will be some, are up to, up to speed and aren't, aren't damaged. Because it doesn't make much of a hole for water to get in. I had a house that had the entire structural sill plate on the second floor where there was a walkout onto another roof, rotted out and ants moved in because there was a pinhole in the caulking joint it was exposed to the driving wind for about five years on a brand new build. Hmm. And it was just this little pinhole about a quarter inch wide. And that's all it took. And it rotted out everything and they got an end infestation. And it was just dust when we got in there. So, you know, maintenance is an important thing, guys. Uh, if ceiling drywall is yellowish, can, can you spray a 20% bleach water solution to help get rid of the yellowish color? Uh, do a spot test first and let dry, I should move. Wow, so three things that make drywall yellow. One is uh, people that smoked in the room. Number one is you installed it and it never got painted and it'll go yellow over time. Third one is 
there's something in the attic above it that's decomposing. I'm hoping it's one of the first two. Um, <laughs> regardless of the issue with that, yes, you can use a, a primer sealer. Uh, if you have discoloration and you think it might be cigarette smoke, then always use an oil-based um, primer, primer for that. Uh, pop down to your local Sherwin-Williams. They'll be able to pick out a product for you that'll work really well. Uh, do you have any ideas to insulate a uh, room above, the, uh, above a garage? Yeah, I got great ideas about that. Um, generally speaking, everything up until maybe the last five years or so has been done wrong because you need to have an insulation area and then an airspace before your floor joists. And you need to pump heat into that airspace and have a cold air return. So you have air circulation and it has to be warm air. Otherwise, your floors are gonna be cold. If you insulate without a source of heat, you're cold. Uh, for a poured concrete floor basement, when uh, this guy's installing his vinyl, does he need to put subflooring or vapor barrier under it before he installs? You don't have to. You can put vinyl directly on concrete. Check with the manufacturer. Some of them suggest you use a vapor barrier or another underlay. It all depends. There's a lot of different products and a lot of different manufacturers, a lot of different opinions. But yeah, you don't need a whole subfloor system for that. Uh, does faced insulation work as a vapor barrier in a basement? No, the paper face does not. Right. If you need a vapor barrier, then you need a vapor barrier. Um, Ask yourself, is that look as thick as a six mil poly? Because they used to have a three mil poly and they got rid of that in the early 80s and replaced it with super six because they found the three mil wasn't strong enough. It got damaged too easy and they wanted to replace that to make sure that it would stand up. A um, couple of quick ones here, vinyl plank or laminate? Vinyl plank or laminate? I always go vinyl. Okay, uh, how, uh, when you install a floor, do you need to always use spacers? Around the outside? Yeah, question. only if your drywall goes right to the floor. In a lot of cases, it doesn't. Your floor will be thinner than the gap between the drywall and the floor, and then a spacer won't work. So it really depends on your situation. Mm -hmm. um, what's the time? 5-2. Five 5-2, two. Five two. okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a quick minute. I want to do a shout out about something here yeah, real quick. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, uh, a little channel business here, okay? We have been working diligently in the background one of the things that really drives me nuts is the cost of building materials and the cost of getting fixtures and all that stuff supplied. So because the channel's getting to that critical mass, you know, we're, we're pushing towards the million subscriber mark. We're starting to get a little bit of attention and respect from suppliers and people in the marketplace. I'm expecting into next year, we're gonna be in a place where we're gonna be positioned to be the bridge between the manufacturer and you guys, okay, at home. So uh, I'm gonna do a shout out right now. If you are in business in the United States and you are looking to get into the e-commerce world and are looking for a way to supply your product to market at a lower cost alternative than traditional retail, then feel free to contact me. If you are just looking for me to be a guy that can show your stuff on my channel, don't waste your time. If you wanna send me free product to take a look at, that's fine. I might look at it, I might not look at it, I might use it, I might not use it. I don't have time for that. We're making videos that are designed to help you guys build your stuff, okay? So we don't wanna get wrapped up in too many of these product deals, but if there are companies out there that are willing to partner with us so that we can help close that gap and give you a great connection to a better deal, then I'm all for it, and we're gonna be working hard to find those deals for you, hopefully, in the new year. Mm -hmm. Back to you. Can you fill a hole in drywall with spray foam and let it dry? Yes. Trim spray foam down and finish with drywall mud. Boom. Yes. Right. It works. We did that in a video. I was going to say right here, but this is the wrong basement. <laughs> uh, <sighs> best recommendation for where to go to properly learn to do home electrical work? My channel. Your YouTube channel. And this weekend, we are releasing a new video on finishing the bathroom and all the electrical things. So, plates, love, sorry, plates. My God, my tongue is broken today. Lights, plugs, switches, towel bars, pot lights, vanity lights, heated mirrors, everything. Tell, I mean, if it's electrical and it's in a bathroom, there's a video coming up this weekend to show you how to finish it all off. If you want to learn how to do electrical work, there may be a community college that might have a course for you. I doubt it. Mm. Um, if you're really keen on it and you're young, I would suggest go, go to school, become an apprentice, learn it. Otherwise, you can follow my channel. 
Yeah. I mean, basically there's it. not a whole lot out there on electrical. I think there's a couple of guys on the internet that are doing electrical work. So it's all relative to where you live too, because code's different um, down in the States than it is up here for sure. But uh, we'll give you the basic gist. From there, if you're working with a, an inspector in your area, generally speaking, we can get you close enough that you can fix it yeah, if there's any issues. Um, but yeah, man, lots of research. What kind of watch are you wearing? I don't know. My wife bought it for me. Let me see. I can't even read. I'm half blind. Oh, it's a gas watch. Nice. It was a gift. Yeah. Nice. No, and I'm not going to be like other people and put that on my Amazon link. That just gets nuts. Yeah. Like yeah. The last, last, someone asked you about your socks or whatever. Yeah. Nothing you know, like they're socks, guys. I, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not going there. <laughs> I have uh, enough on my plate. Aaron Boswell is a new member. Shout out to that guy. Hey, Aaron. Is, Cheers, uh, man. Welcome. The new show starts in just a couple minutes. Uh, is a cement board better for bathrooms regarding moisture? Um, well, it's better that if you have moisture, it won't go to mold. That's the thing. Top three things to uh, <laughs> renovate to uh, up the resale value on a home. Okay. If, as a DIY, mm -hmm. paint, flooring. Then you can take a look at your kitchen or bathroom. But curb appeal is huge. So aside from major projects, give your pa place a paint job, put in new flooring, and fix your curb appeal. Nice. Um, and that might just mean put a nice, nice pretty red door on. That might be all it is. Um, anyway, I'm going to count you down because I think we're going to be done. Do your thing, yeah. All right. I will say I'm black. Guys, it's been a blast having you join us today. If you are not a member, consider being one. We can help you with your projects. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, <laughs> like a whole lot of people that watch our videos, I don't know what's going on. I think it's a man thing. Uh, hit the subscribe button. But more importantly, hit the like. Let YouTube know that you like the content here. Okay, that is like crucial. Uh, the more you guys hit these buttons and subscribe and like and leave comments, the more YouTube's happy with our performance, the more they'll share us with other people who need our help. So if our goal is to help people, the more people, the better. Anyway, that's it for us today. Cheers, we are signing off. Max has already hit a button, and he's going to let me know when I'm gone. And I'm going to just rattle on until he says so. Maybe I'll be like a news reporter who's done it. Yeah, Let's yeah, pretend yeah. I'm drawing notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doodling. What's the Anchorman ending thing? Oh, yeah. Stay classy, San Diego. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I like that.